do not have a copy of the syllabus of course, I will be able to give you if you give me your uh, email id I can forward that or I will give you my email id and if you write to me saying that sir I am your student at uh, the Thiruvananthapuram center or Kasagod center or Palkad center I would like to have a copy of the KS syllabus I will forward ok. And then if all of you are asking for copies then I will have a tough time forwarding and you can have a leader and let the leader write to me ok. I will send a copy of the syllabus to the leader and the leader will help you take a copies agreed agreed or I will give one copy here which you can take and photocopy, but you should have a copy of the syllabus very very important thing ok. And then you have uh, one and a half months for preparation you get the point and uh, the subject or subjects I will be handling are English which comes under paper 2 or as part of paper 2 20 marks and the advantage rather than the disadvantage of English is if you know English, if you know English grammar and if you are able to score 20 out of 20 one thing I can assure you what is that you will certainly be passing the prelims this can make you or mar you if you lose a lot of marks in English then you have no chance of uh, clearing the prelims you get the point. So, here we have a syllabus in English which of course should be quite familiar to you because you have been studying English for many years now you are graduates and so some of you are post graduates ok. But the problem is you should have the right answer with you at the time of the examination An examination as you know is presenting what you know within the prescribed time that is examination you get the point then before I start teaching you English of course the most uh, important or rather difficult portions I will introduce myself anybody here who knows my name I think I have seen one or, no, one or two of you no no my name is Gangatharan full name Gangatharan Nair ok and I retired from university college and then joined Center for Continuing Education Kerala as its uh, academic associate and I was one of the three who were instrumental in establishing Kerala State Civil Service Academy in 2005 the academy was est established ok and then I was appointed chief coordinator in that capacity I continued up to 2012 then for 2 years I worked at uh, the NSS civil service academy as coordinator then I left for the United States spent some time with my son came back and went about to teaching civil service aspirants and again in 2016 I was forced to take up the post once again with that continued in the I continued in that post till 2018 ok and uh, you know a time comes when you should call it quits and in 2018 I called it quits. But now I go about taking classes from Talasheri to Thiruvananthapuram. Talasheri Kanu University has a campus there where of course they started the Civil Service Academy and I was one of its advisors and then we have Civil Service Academy has a lot of major sub centers 
Palakkad, Pannani, Kodi Kodi, etc. Where I go and teach, not English of course, but international relations and uh, part of world history and then environmental also. So, since I have been in this field, I have been quite, I am quite familiar with the syllabi of uh, all the portions and then three or four portions or topics I handle. Okay. Then anyhow, today I will, uh, we have three hours, two hours I will take English, one hour international relations because all the five hours English means you will be bored okay. because English classes are something that you do not want honestly, but English is a language that most of you do not know how to handle that is a fact. You get, get the point? So, I will try to make my class as interesting as possible, okay. but certain sections of uh, English grammar, portions of English grammar will not be quite interesting and then you should bear with me. Then another thing is I teach my subject whatever it be in English and English only. Okay. At times I may use one or two words in Malayalam because uh, I am strongly of the opinion that the best way to learn a language is to expose yourself to that language. You should expose yourself to that language. You should listen to good speakers in English. Okay? You try to speak English, write English and that is the way it is. Okay? And uh, in fact, I developed a love of English because my father told me many many years ago he is no more had he been alive he would have been 107 years old he was an ESLC man he used to tell me that the best way to learn this language is to fall in love with this language he knew English a little bit of English he knew old ESLC man you get the point. So, you should also fall in love with this language then this language will be easy will not be difficult at all, it is easier than any other foreign language. You get the point? That is it. And now, then as part of your syllabus, we have uh, 22 portions or 22, we can say uh, sections, tenses, synonyms, phrasal verbs, antonyms, antonyms means opposite error correction, adjectives, adverbs, reported speech, active voice, passive voice, voice, auxiliary verb, question tag, degrees of comparison, punctuation, idioms and phrases, simple compound complex sentences, connectives, prepositional verbs, prepositions, concord, pronouns, nine types, word order and sentence order. Okay, <coughs> I will begin with the pronouns, nine types, you may know one or two types. Okay. Nine types means there are some types which you do not know. Okay. So, what you do not know, I will teach you here, you get the point? Then as part of your preparation, make it a point to subscribe to or buy and uh, go through magazines okay, or periodicals that publish material on KAS, publications like Tholil Vartha or Tholil Viti. You get the point? They cover of course, they try to cover the entire syllabus okay? and uh, some of them are really good, very, very good. Some of you, how many of you read? Uh, Tholil Vartha, then Tholil Viti. Okay. So, either read either Tholil Vartha or Tholil Viti, it is a must for you. Just spend 15 rupees a week, 15 rupees a week. Okay. Some 12 pages, 6 or 7 pages. Now, they have started model examination also, tests also. 
do that please go through that please we have what you call the time constraint okay we will not get time uh, to cover all the portions so we require such useful periodicals as tholvartha and tholvidhi you get the point ah huh. and if you read tholvartha you will come across my name there because i write english there you know then hmm. come on prepositions what's a preposition it's not preposition 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 is actually a combination of pre plus position pre means before pre degree before degree post means after so pre position the position of uh, the preposition is before normally before a noun or a pronoun okay preposition okay then a pronoun uh, we will begin with the pronoun not preposition pronoun what's a pronoun then pro is the short form of proxy proxy means something that another person does for you he may be absent in a class okay then another person can uh, proxy your number we used to do that in our degree classes when attendance was quite compulsory okay proxy noun actually that is pro noun then what's a pronoun or what's the use of a pronoun suppose you have sentences like this balu went to the post office balu bought some stamps balu came back home so three sentences each sentence has balu there so it's boring is not repetition is certainly boring but in the second sentence balu went to the post office he bought some stamps he returned home that he actually stands for balu so he is a preposition you get the point then i am an indian here i stands for gangadharan and on behalf of you all i can say we are indians we are indians okay so i we then you are a good student you are all students you are all job seekers you are all ks aspirants you refers to what the person spoken to i we these two refer to the person speaking you refer to the person spoken to okay uh, look at the boy he is very studious or he is sleeping there i am referring to a person a third person i am speaking about a person okay so pronouns are classified into three groups one first person pronoun now listen to me first person pronoun examples i we so first person pronouns refer to the person or persons speaking we can all say we are indians i can say we are indians one person and then so many persons we are indian so person or persons speaking that is known as first person then you are a good student you are good students or you are civil service aspirants ks aspirants so i first i refer to one person then i refer to so many persons or more than one that is known as second person person spoken to okay and then see they are late for the class okay they came here yesterday 
I am speaking about some people, some persons. Okay, he was here yesterday. I am speaking about a person who came here yesterday. She, and she is a good girl. I am speaking about a girl uh, who is very good, very good. Okay, very good student or very good girl. So they, he, she, it. These four are known as third person pronouns. So, pronouns are classified into three, first person I, V, second person U, third person they, he, she, it. You get the point? And uh, these three persons jo are jointly known as, collectively known as personal pronouns. Of the nine pronouns or nine types of pronouns, <coughs> the first type is personal pronouns. Now, we write first B Q personal P R S O N A L personal pronouns. Ah, personal pronouns are used as a substitute for a person's name. Personal pronouns are used as a substitute for a person's name. Now, we know personal pronouns are of three types, first person, second person, third person. Okay. And once you learn it, once you hear from the mouth of a teacher, then make it a point to uh, by heart it rather, keep it with you, within you always, do not forget it. Okay. And then so, if I say I am an Indian, we are Indian first person, you are a student, you are all responsible citizens of the country second person, they seldom come here third person plural, he is a writer, she is a good cook, look at the, look at the dog, it has no tail, it, it refers to the, an animal there, to refer to an animal inanimate objects, then among human beings, child, infant, baby. To refer to these three, you can use, three, you can use it. Okay? So, of the nine types, first is personal pronouns. Personal pronouns are again classified as first person, second person, third person. Then, a, say first person, a personal pronouns can come as subjects as well as objects. See, personal pronouns can come as subjects as well as objects. If you say, he asked me, he asked me, there me is object. Subject is I, subject is I. I asked him, him is the object. How would you identify an object? Very easy, very, very easy. Okay. Ask the question whom, w h o m or what to the verb. I met him yesterday, I met whom, him. He saw me this morning, he saw me. He saw whom me. Okay. You get the point? So, whom or what? In Malayalam we call it are alangil endine. Whom or what? You get the object. If I say he asked me, me is object. I asked him, I subject. I, we, you, they, he, she, it, they are all subjects and their corresponding object forms are I, me, we, us, you, you. You met me yesterday, I met you yesterday, you met me yesterday, you subject, I met you, 
you say in the second sentence this is object I met you. So, you, you what about they? Them, we saw them at the theatre, them. So, they subject them object, then he, he did it, he subject, he telephoned her or I telephoned him, he subject him object, she subject her object, her object, what about it? Uh, it subject, it is I T S, not I T apostrophe S. You should know the difference between I T S and I T apostrophe S. See for pronouns normally do not use any apostrophe, wrong to use an apostrophe with a pronoun. Okay? If you write I T apostrophe S, it is an abbreviated form, shortened form, elision of a it is, it is. Okay. You get the point? Very often you come across uh, uh, say words like L E T apostrophe S. Let us, let us do it or let us do it, let us do it abbreviated, let us do it. What is your name? An Englishman will never say what is your name. That is typical Indian way of uh, asking a question, what is your name? Because we stress each and every word. Okay. You, you get the point? Malayalam is a syllable stressed language. What about English? Stress timed language. What is your name? What is your name? As it is a question word, what? What of course is stressed? You are is not stressed, name is stressed. What is your name? He came here yesterday, he came here yesterday, he is not stressed, came is stressed yesterday. Okay? So, stress timed. So, for abbreviations, of course, they use apostrophe S, yes. elision, short term. For letters, let apostrophe S. Yes. It is it's the way they say it, it is the way they do it. I T apostrophe S, yes, not I T S. I T S means adinde alangil idinde. Look at the dog, its tail is short. Its tail I T S, not I T apostrophe S. Yes. It is a common mistake. Okay. Uh, you find in uh, most writers and uh, writers, of course. So, personal pronoun three types of pronouns then subject form and object form. I think you have uh, some idea now. Now, <coughs> personal pronouns have uh, some adjective forms also, adjectives. What are the adjectives? My book, book is a noun. The word my indicates that it is something special. The, the uh, here my book, book is actually qualified there. Its peculiarity is mentioned. That is it is my book. You get the point? So, my is called possessive adjective. A noun comes immediately after that, my book. What about the possessive adjective of we? Our, our school, our O U R, our school. Possession is indicated. Okay, and then school is qualified or modified, qualified. Our school. What about you? Your parents. A noun comes after that. Your parents. Parents noun. Your possession is indicated, your parents that noun is qualified. So, your, your is also a possessive 
pronoun uh, uh, adjective and then what about uh, they their school their college their office t h e i r don't confuse it with the t h e r e t h e i r their and what about he ah uh, his laptop he subject his possessive adjective what about she her okay what about it its its okay ah uh, so the basic things then we have the second type so personal pronouns over one uh, one type is over now we come to the second type known as possessive pronouns p o s s c s s i v e possessive pronouns see possessive pronoun a possessive pronoun a possessive pronoun has two functions or does two functions what are those two functions one is ownership is indicated that's why the word possessive ownership is indicated second is it avoids the repetition of a noun i'll explain just don't worry understand it first and then note down if i say this is my book where is your book this is my book where is your book a second time this is my book where is your book you know that can be avoided you can simply say where is yours where is yours why were you are s so the word yours helps you to avoid the repetition of uh, the noun book it also indicates that you possess it you are the owner you are the possessor of the book your book okay then if we begin with uh, the subject i its possessive a uh, pronoun is mine mine okay that's your uh, phone this is mine this is mine that means this is my phone this is mine m i n e mine what about we the subject and what is its possessive pronoun then ours o u r s ours ours okay ours hmm. that's your bus ours is coming that means our bus is coming that's your bus ours is coming o u r s no apostrophe for possessive pronouns very very important thing okay then what about uh, you yours okay what about they they is t h e i r s no apostrophe then what about he his okay his this is my ticket that is his ticket that is his you don't have to say his ticket that's his what about she hers h e r s what about it its i t s okay ah then a uh, very often in uh, leave letters we come across yours faithfully where you are you are apostrophe s yes. finished wrong okay the before the before independence i should say my father used to tell me that uh, it was easy to get a job if you are a little bit of uh, if you have a little bit of ed english education you can walk into a school and say that i passed the slc or the 10th class i would like to get a job then the headmaster or the manager used to tell you uh, 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 write a write an application form 
write an application okay and there they will be watching the whole thing your handwriting your grammar and above all the way you write yours yours faithfully or yours truly you get the point why were you are if you write an apostrophe you are finished they will not take you that is the thing. So, the second type also we have come across what is that possessive pronouns. Now, we come to the third one, third one is <coughs> reflexive pronoun, reflexive pronoun, reflexive R E F L E X I V reflexive pronouns and how you how, how do you form a reflexive pronoun by adding s e l f if the pronoun is singular if it is plural s e l v e s self plural selves self plural selves s e l v e s okay and then this is normally added self is normally added to its object form myself not I self myself subject is of course I object is my myself what about uh, we ourselves O U R S E L V E S only plural form ourselves okay and what about you yourself O U O U R S E L F if it is singular if you indicates plural then yourselves O U O U R S E L V E S Okay, I can look at one person and say you yourself must do it O U I U R S E L F. But if I look at all of you and say you yourselves then plural S E L V E S that is the difference. Okay, what about uh, third person they themselves object form is them and S E L V E S themselves then what about he? himself what about she herself what about it itself then what say reflexive pronoun <coughs> a reflexive pronoun is used to, to refer back to the subject of a sentence reflexive pronouns are used or a reflexive pronoun is used to refer back to the subject of a sentence ah. reflexive pronouns usually occur O C C U R occur as objects hmm. see if you look at the mirror what do you see you see yourself I saw myself in the mirror I saw myself your reflection is there okay the action reflects back to the subject that is why it is called a reflexive pronoun okay I hurt myself I was cutting vegetables but then I hurt myself I hurt H U R T hurt myself Okay, ah, some examples also you may note down. I hurt myself while cutting grass. I hurt H U R T myself while cutting the grass. Underline myself. We saw ourselves in the mirror. We saw ourselves. Why you are a C L? We yes in the mirror. Hmm. You have to blame yourself for the trouble you have to blame yourself for you are S E L F 
for the trouble. They squandered the money, S Q U A N D E R E D. Squandered means wasted, W A S T E D. They wasted the money, squandered, S Q A N D E R E D, the money, and ruined themselves. Ruined themselves. Ruined whom? Themselves. So, they come in the position of the object, ruined themselves. She dressed herself in black after the death of her, of her husband. She dressed herself in black, dressed herself in black. Okay. You can avoid that herself by saying she was dressed in black, she was dressed in black that is correct. She dressed herself or Huh. Okay. Uh, she dressed herself in black after the death of her husband or at the funeral of her husband. So, that is a reflexive pronoun, a pronoun that comes at the position of the object, okay. reflecting the action, sending the back, sending the action back to the subject. Okay. Hmm. Then the next one is intensive pronoun, also known as emphatic pronoun, intensive, I N T E N S I V E, intensive pronouns, also known as emphatic pronouns. <coughs> then this is also formed by adding. S C -E L F or ah, S E L V E S. <coughs> S C -E L V E S. If it is singular, S C -E L F. Plural, S C -E L V E S. Cells. Then, often for emphasis, you will say, "Okay, I myself found him." Or I found him myself. I found him myself. Him is the object there. So that there myself does not come in the position of the object. It comes to emphasize the fact that you did some action. You did some action. Okay, you are sure about it. I myself found him or I found him myself position you can shift. Okay. So, um, uh, intensive pronoun or emphatic pronoun uh, reinforces the action, reinforces means makes strong, reinforces the action. Example, I myself found him, I myself found him or I found him myself. No, it is different from reflexive pronoun. I hurt myself, there it comes as an object, I hurt myself. Okay. Ah. She dressed herself, there reflexive. So, I myself found him or I found him myself. You yourself are responsible for the trouble. Okay, you yourself are responsible for the trouble. Okay, emphatic, intensive, emphatic yourself. We ourselves will receive the guests at the airport. We ourselves, we ourselves will receive the guests at the airport. We ourselves will receive the guests at the airport. <coughs> or we have to receive the guests ourselves, we have to receive the guests ourselves, position fluctuates. Okay. And those who are writing on a piece of paper must rewrite the whole thing in a notebook, okay. because piece of paper can be lost, but not a notebook. This is something that you require for use for your generation, for the next generation as well. Okay. Oh. Then, 
Next is a very easy one known as intero, uh, demonstrative pronoun. Demonstrative pronoun or de plural demonstrative pronouns. Number 5. Number 5 demonstrative pronouns. Demonstrate means okay, this, that. So, this, that, these, those, these four are the demonstrative pronouns. This, that, these, those, this and that are singular, these and those are plural. Okay. Example in the sentence, this is the shortest route to the railway station. This is the shortest route to the railway station. That is not the way a gentleman should behave. That is not the way a gentleman should behave. What does it indicate? You did something, you know, and that was quite bad. So, that is not the way a gentleman should behave. Plural. These oranges are imported from Australia. These oranges are imported from Australia. These oranges are imported from Australia. Underline uh, these. Then, then you can say those were the days when we were young and energetic. The old people often say such things. Those were the days when uh, we were young and energetic. Those were the days. Okay. Hmm? So, this, that, these, those demonstrative pronouns. For heaven's sake, learn this version because there will certainly be one question. I guarantee I tell you. And I have prepared uh, a model exercise also for you. Actually, honestly, I prepared it for a Tholu Vartha. I okay. will be sending it to them today. Anyhow, I will if time permits, I will give you the exercise, some um, 15 sentences. When I at least I will read out those sentences, then you will know the type of questions that could be asked. Next, number 6, interrogative pronouns, interrogative pronouns, interrogative pronouns, I N T E R R O G A T I V. Interrogate a person means question him. The police are interrogating the suspects, interrogating, questioning, interrogative is the adjective, interrogative pronouns. Huh, what are they? Very easy, who, whom, whose, what, which, who, whom, whose, what, which. <coughs> okay. Ah. Can you use who in a sentence? Very easy. Ah, who is your father? Okay, very simple sentence. But can you make it a little more uh, standard? Who was the first president of India? Yeah, so that is that sentence acquires a little bit of uh, seriousness, importance, gravity. Okay, who is the first president of India or who, who was India's first president? Then can you use whom in a sentence? Hmm? Ah, whom do you want to meet? Whom do you want to meet? That is the old grammatical way of saying it, but now they say who do you want to meet? Englishmen themselves have uh, modified their grammar like that. Who do you want to meet? Okay? And old way is whom do you want to meet? Okay. Whom did you meet yesterday? Whom? Yeah. <coughs> what about uh, 
this one what what do you want what about whose whose book is this this book is mine whose book is this whose w h o s e not w h o s or h o e s whose uh. <coughs> Interrogative pronoun. Which, which, hmm, which is the shortest route to the airport? Which is the shortest route to the airport? Then again, I'll tell you the difference between what and which. Many people do not know that. I'll tell you very honestly, because I have been teaching English grammar for the last forty years. Forty four zero. So, I know many people do not know the difference between uh, what and who, what and which. Okay. You should say what is the capital of India, not which is the capital of India. What is the capital of India? You get the point? Hmm? But if I say like say like this, New Delhi, Mumbai. Kolkata, Bangalore, which of these, which of these is the capital of India? You have mentioned some four cities, choose one. So, mention at least two and then choose, then only you can use which. Okay, exceptions are there, but for the time being, do not confuse yourself with all those exceptions. Hmm? Which is the shortest route to the airport means there are several routes to the airport, several routes to the airport, but I want the shortest route that is why which is the shortest route. Okay. But suppose you do not know anything about the various routes to the airport, then you can say what is the shortest route. What is the shortest route? Okay. So, you use which when you have some choices before you and you have to make the choice. You get the point? Ah. So, what is the capital of India? Not which is the capital of India. Okay. Mumbai, Chennai, Delhi, which is the largest city or which is the most populous city? Populous means having a large population or populated. Hmm. Now, that is over, you come to the next one, reciprocal pronouns number 7, reciprocal R E C I P R O C A L, reciprocal pronouns. Where you say just to two, each other one another each other comma one another and what is a reciprocal pronoun do or what do reciprocal pronouns do? They express mutual actions or relationship, reciprocal pronouns express mutual actions or relationship. Okay, you have all seen boxes punching each other. The boxes punched each other. Okay, at the final round, one person will ah, punch the other person because he is tired. Normally, boxers punch each other. Write that sentence. Ah. The boxes punched P U N C H E D each other. Then, what about one another? If it is more than two, listen to me. If it is more than two, normally, ah, uh, we should use one another. More than two. Okay, one another. But now, English grammarians say there is not much difference between 
each other and one another, prefer to use one another. So, if you read English novels, novels written by Englishmen, not novels written by Indians, English novels written by Indians, not many of them write correct English except Sashi Tharoor, then okay, he writes English, wonderful English then. So, the president asked his country, asked the countrymen to love one another. The president asked his countrymen, countrymen is one word, do not write as two words, country and then men, no, one word countrymen to love, to love one another, underline one another. And in the first sentence, the boxers punched each other, underline each other. Why is this underlining? Because you are highlighting that. Okay, showing its importance, highlighting. Mm. Now, <coughs> number 7, in the, uh, 7 is over, in the hmm? reciprocal one, uh, now it is 8, indefinite pronouns, indefinite, I N D E F I N I T E. What is the meaning of indefinite? Indefinite means not sure, not sure. Okay. Definite means sure, certain, opposite is indefinite and uh, indefinite pronouns refer to one or more unspecified objects. Indefinite pronouns refer to one or more unspecified un S P E C I F I E D objects, comma beings B I N G S beings or places P L A C E S unspecified objects beings means human beings beings or places ah. and uh, these are the indefinite pronouns. Write down anyone hope. Castle Road people are, are listening to me and they have time to note down what I say. Hmm? Okay. Indefinite pronouns are anyone, anyone write as one word, anyone, comma somebody again one word, somebody should be written as one word. If you write as two words, somebody. Okay. Some body was found floating on the river, committed suicide, jumped into the river, body was found floating, some body, somebody one word. Okay. Then whichever W H I C H E V E R, whichever, hmm. whoever, whatever. other O T H E or other something S O M E T H I N G something comma nobody write as one word huh? nobody comma one comma many comma few comma much we have many more in fact, but we will uh, stop with these because they are the most important ones. Hmm. Anybody, anyone, you know, anyone, anybody, somebody, someone, same, same, okay. hmm. nobody, no one, like that. Can you use anyone in a sentence? Okay. Is there anyone who can answer this question? Is there anyone in the class who can answer this question? Okay, anyone, indefinite, not sure who exactly it is, anyone, okay. uh, if you are right, you are right. Is there anyone who can answer this question? Okay. Hmm. And once you pass the prelims exam, you have the descriptive type questions. Okay, for the prelims it is objective type. One question is given, four answers also given. Choose the right one. Okay. An example of that I will 
give you soon okay now take whatever you like take whatever you like uh, as part of that another sentence it is all priced 10 rupees each it is all priced P R I C D it is all priced P R I C D there is another priced you know that P R I Z is Z D D priced 10 rupees each then you are looking at a wonderful house and then you say to yourself what whoever wants this house must be a millionaire whoever wants this house must be a millionaire whoever okay wants this house must be a millionaire okay no. then another sentence nobody knows how the thief got into the house nobody knows how the thief got into the house nobody okay indefinite pronoun hmm. and then we come to the last and the most important last and most important relative pronouns relative pronouns and the most important relative pronouns are just five who comma whose comma whom comma which w h i c h comma that t h a t that ok there are two more but they are named uh, 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 in a different way or they have different names so these are the relative pronouns who whose whom which that <coughs> See, I will just give you one sentence you write down. The man who stole my car, the man who stole my car has been apprehended, A P P R E, H E N D E D, apprehended means caught, apprehended, learn that word the man who stole my car has been apprehended two actions are referred to here what are they some person no someone stole my car that person has been apprehended two actions both the actions refer to one and the same person so you are relating the two the actually the subjects of two actions and say both are one the man uh, has been apprehended who stole my car ok the man stole my car that man has been apprehended so the man who stole my car has been apprehended who is a relative pronoun why is it called relative pronoun who uh, indicates the relation between the person who stole my car and the person who has, has been apprehended relationship is known then why is it a pronoun because this who helps you to avoid a second mention ok a second time mentioning the subject ok the man stole my watch the man has been apprehended second time the man can be avoided so a pronoun always helps you to avoid the repetition of a noun that is why it is called a relative pronoun and then be very very careful you cannot use any comma here if you write a comma if you put a comma after man then the whole thing is wrong ok 
again a comma after my car not needed no question of any comma here then look at this sentence write down this sentence this is the girl this is the girl whose chain was snatched yesterday this is the girl whose chain was snatched yes and eighty C H E S yesterday. Hmm. My question is: Can you split this sentence into two? Can you split it into two? Hmm? This is the girl. <coughs> this girl's chain was snatched yesterday. Okay. This is the girl one sentence this girl chain was snatched yesterday. So, combining both we say this is the girl whose chain meaning is clear. So, whose is a relative pronoun okay. here also no comma is needed because they are intimately connected both the action actions are intimately connected. Hmm. Next one this is the dog this is the dog that bit my friend that bit my friend the other day this is the dog that bit my friend the other day this is the dog first and second sentence is the do this dog bit my friend the other day okay being graduates and post graduates i would like to ask you this question what is the difference between yesterday and the other day? Hmm, yesterday we know clearly, the other day means some day in the past, some day in the past. Okay. You are not specifying that the other day. Okay. Huh. So, this is the dog that underlined that with my friend yesterday. Yeah, the, the, uh, the other day then <coughs> you know ah, write another sentence this is my friend George this is my friend George comma who is working in a bank who is working in a bank this is my friend George G O R G comma who is working in a bank. Here a comma is unavoidable and if you avoid a comma if you do not write a comma what is the meaning then? This is my friend George uh, who is working in a bank what is the meaning of that? Or bank will work in the George Yalan. So, actually two things are said about George, he is your friend, this is my friend George, George is working in a bank, George is working in a bank. So, a comma is put because you mention a person, you mention a person here, if you mention a person or place a comma is a must. Okay. This is New Delhi, which is the capital of India. Should you put a comma or no comma? Hmm? This is New Delhi, which is India's capital. Comma. This is New Delhi, comma, which is India's capital. Otherwise, what, what will happen? India would have capital I, New Delhi, you know. Actually, you are trying to restrict New Delhi into it. This is New Delhi which is the capital of India comma which is the capital of India. So, I gave you five examples in the first three no comma before the relative pronoun. In the last two there are commas each sentence has comma George okay. then another sentence this is Mumbai which is the commercial capital of India this is Mumbai comma which is the commercial capital of India. 
So, in the first sentence the person or thing is defined, defined means you speak of them as a particular one, the dog that bit my friend, you are restricting, you are defining, okay. defining means specifying, De the word define means to specify, define it means specify it, what exactly is it? But the last two examples or at least that sentence what? This is my friend George who is uh, who works in a bank, two things are said about my friend or that person, each is actually independent. This is my friend George, he works in a bank, a comma is put there. Okay. So, the first one or two examples, two or three example, uh, examples are known as defining a relative clauses and this last two non defining relative clauses. Now, listen to me and write down like this relative classes are classified as relative clauses C L A U S E S are classified as 1. Defining relative clauses and two non defining N O N hyphen D F I N I N G non defining relative clause, defining relative clause and non defining relative clause. <coughs> The defining relative clause, the defining relative clause limits L I M I T S limits or restricts R E S T R I C T S the noun or pronoun, the noun or pronoun to a particular type to a particular type or example, to a particular type or example, you are defining it, restricting it, define means to restrict, limit. Hmm. Examples, the man who stole my car has been apprehended, this is the fort that Akbar built or this is a mausoleum that uh, Shah Jahan constructed in memory of his wife Mumdas, Mumdas Mahal, you know, hmm. right like that. Now, non defining, right, <coughs> non defining relative pronouns, non defining relative pronouns do not impose impose any restriction of any sort or uh, do not impose any restriction on the noun or pronoun they refer to no restriction no they in fact give us additional information, they in fact give us additional information, about the person or thing in question, about the person or thing in question, about the person or thing in question. So, non defining means not restricting, limiting, in fact additional pieces of information are given to us, at least one additional piece of information is given, do not say informations, you know why? Information is an uncountable noun, an uncountable noun has no plural, you know modern classification of nouns is as countable nouns and uncountable nouns, 
Okay, there are so many classifications of nouns. One classification of the oldest type is proper noun, common noun, collective noun, material noun, you know. Okay. But the modern definition is nouns are countables or uncountables. Countable nouns or uncountable nouns. Nouns which you can count are called countables. Nouns which you cannot count are called uncountables. Okay. A countable noun has a singular. Chairs is plural. A chair or one chair singular. Chair singular, chairs plural. Then uncountable nouns. Okay. There is a list of uncountable nouns and some of the uncountable nouns are in fact very interesting to listen to. Advice, A D V I C E. It is wrong to say advice says. You can say many pieces of advice or much advice. Okay. His father gave him many pieces of advice before he joined uh, the college, before he joined the college, many pieces of advice or much advice, advice, equipment, e q u i p m e n t, equipment is uncountable noun, no plural, stationery, cutlery, jewelry, machinery, crockery, all these are uncountable. Then again you should say footwear, 